All right, so when we were converting systems of linear equations into other equivalent systems in previous lessons, we were able to use certain operations to manipulate the systems in order to get equivalent systems. And we could use three rules to do that. The first one was we could interchange two equations. The second one was we could multiply one equation by a non-zero constant. And the third rule was we could add a multiple of one equation to another equation. Now when we deal with matrices, we call these operations elementary row operations. And these are exactly the same rules that were applied to systems of linear equations, except they're just written in a more concise way to apply for matrices. So the first rule is that we can take one row of the matrix and we can interchange it with another row. And this is exactly like rule one for systems of linear equations, right? We can interchange two equations and in matrices, we can interchange two rows. The second rule is that we can take any row that we want and we can multiply it by a non-zero constant I'll call C. And this is exactly like rule number two for systems of linear equations. You can take one equation and you can multiply it by a non-zero constant. And finally, the third rule is that we can take some row and we can add to it a multiple of another row I'll call RI. And this is exactly like equation, or I'm sorry, rule three, add a multiple of one equation to another equation. So let's take RI, multiply it by some non-zero constant C and add it to RJ to get a new RJ. So this will yield a new RJ. And what I mean by this is that, let's say I took row two and I added it, added to it a non-zero constant times row one, and this would yield a new R2. So to get a little bit of practice using these elementary row operations, let's actually scroll down here and do an example. Let's say I was given this augmented matrix here, and we wanted to perform this row operation here. R1 interchange with R3. All this means is that we'll take row one and we'll switch it with row three, right? Row one is interchanged with row three. So our resulting matrix, well, the new row one is gonna be what row three was initially. So that'll be three, negative four, seven, two. And then row two doesn't change. One, two, three, and four. And row three becomes what row one was initially. So that'll be two, negative one, one, and six. All right, let's do another one. Let's say we wanted to perform this operation, negative two times R2. Well, we're using the second rule here, and we're saying let's take row two and multiply it by a non-zero constant, which is negative two. Well, when we look at row two, which is right here, we wanna multiply all these values by negative two. So our new matrix will become two, negative one, one, and six, right? That's just the first row. And then I'll go ahead and rewrite the third row, three, negative four, seven, and two. And now we need to multiply every element in row two by negative two to get the new R2. So one times negative two is negative two, two times negative two is negative four, three times negative two is negative six, and four times negative two is negative eight. And there it is, our new matrix. And remember, anytime we perform an elementary row operation, our matrices are equivalent systems of linear equations, right? We're just manipulating certain rows to obtain new matrices which are equivalent. And that applies when we take the matrix and we use the coefficients and the constants to write the systems of linear equations. All right, so let's do another one. Let's do this row operation. Let's take R1 and add to it a multiple of R2. So we wanna multiply row two times the non-zero constant two, and we wanna add to it row one. And this will yield a new row one. So row two is one, two, three, and four. And when we multiply these elements by two, we'll get a, we'll get two, four, six, and eight. So this row here is simply the old R2 multiplied by the non-zero constant two. And now we can add to it this row one, right? Which is this right here. 
So 2, negative 1, 1, and 6. If we add these two rows together, we'll get 4. 4 plus negative 1 is 3. 6 plus 1 is 7. And 8 plus 6 is 14. So our new matrix, which I will write right here, will be the following. R1 is now 4, 3, 7, and 14. And the other two rows did not change. 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then we have 3, negative 4, 7, and 2. And although we multiplied R2 by 2, this was only temporary in order to get our new row 1. So whenever we multiply a non-zero constant to a row and then we add it to another row, we're only changing the value of this first row. All right, let's do another one. Let's multiply row one by a non-zero constant, one half. And so all we're doing here is we're taking every element in row one and we're multiplying it by one half or dividing it by two, right? So our new matrix, well, two divided by two is just one. And then negative one divided by two is negative one half. And then one divided by two is one half and six divided by two is three. And the other rows, again, they don't change because we're only performing this row operation on row one. All right, let's do our last one, our last example. And I'll go ahead and do this in a special color. So we're gonna perform this row operation on this matrix. We're gonna take R3, wow, that is distracting, minus R1. And this is equivalent to saying r3 plus negative 1 times r1. So all we're doing is using rule number 3 here, and we're taking one row, we're multiplying it by a non-zero constant, in this case negative 1, and we're adding it to row 3 to get the new row 3. So I'm just going to look at this rule here because both of these operations are exactly the same. I'm simply taking r3 and I'm subtracting r1. So r3 is 3, negative 4, 7, and 2, and we're subtracting row 1, which is 2, negative 1, 1, and 6. So let's subtract these two rows. Well, 3 minus 2 is 1, and then negative 4 minus negative 1 is the same as negative 1 plus, I'm sorry, negative 4 plus 1, and that'll be negative 3. And 7 minus 1 is 6, and finally 2 minus 6 is negative 4. So our new matrix is going to be 2, negative 1, 1, and 6. And remember, row 1 didn't change, even though we're multiplying it by a negative 1. And that's because we're, this rule only applies to the first row that we're going to add 2. So row 2 is 1, 2, 3, and 4. And finally, our new row 3 is what we got right here. And that's 1, negative 3, 6, and negative 4.